Hey, welcome, gentlemen. I am pumped to have this guest on my show. His name is Chris Wilson. He is uh, he's a lifelong fitness and health advocate, and uh, he's been in the fitness industry for over 25 years. He's also uh, the VP of content at Critical Bench, uh, which is an awesome company. I actually use Critical Bench. This is a company that I think it was founded in 99, and Chris is going to talk about the origin story of, of, of Critical Bench, which is really fascinating. But um, I used their bench press program way back in the day. Uh, it was like um, how to improve your bench in, you know, by 50 pounds in so many weeks, blah, blah, blah. And I totally used it. I, I, I bought it with a couple buddies. We printed off all the graphs. We totally followed the program. It actually, to be honest with you, very inspiring. It actually helped me with my programming for the way uh, I program some things with certain clients and uh, for strength and things like that, but very helpful in my fitness career, uh, which is really cool. So um, I was so excited when I was introduced to Chris, we got to uh, jump on a Zoom call and uh, meet uh, for the first time uh, a few weeks ago. And he, actually he ended up having me on his show uh, through Critical Bench called Strong by Design. We had an unbelievable time uh, chatting about life, fitness, uh, masculinity, everything. So really, really good time. And I had to have him on the show as well on The Muscular Gentleman. So uh, of course, I invited him. He's also, um, not only is he part of the, the content, the VP of content, but he runs their YouTube channels. And one of their channels has over a million followers. He built that up himself. Um, and so we just, we, do we dove into fitness. We dove into just being a man, masculinity. Um, in the show, later down the, in the show, I talk about the muscular gentleman and I asked him what he thinks the muscular gentleman is. Unbelievable answer. I absolutely loved it. I, I literally want to uh, like download that, get it uh, transcribed, and then use it in my manual. It was so good. So um, he also has worked alongside some incredible leaders in the fitness industry, which he'll talk about a little bit there too. So um, I'm excited to jump in. So let's get started and let's meet Chris. Welcome to the Muscular Gentleman. Muscular Gentleman. Where we don't apologize for being men. Masculinity, sex, fitness, and attraction. Helping men reclaim their masculine edge, improve their sex life, get the body they've always wanted, and master their mindset to build a life worth living. This is the Muscular Gentleman. And now your host, Rustin Webb. Don't be sorry. That was the first hey, time I've done that, actually. That was a nice, like, now I know exactly how I'm going to answer everything. <laughs> I, can make it, I, can, I can make it not as, as uh, lengthy. Uh, that's hilarious. Okay. Well, uh, good practice. I'm glad. <laughs> not that you needed it. Um, all right. Let me start over. <laughs> now we're right. rolling? Yes, we are rolling. Uh, welcome, muscular gentlemen. This okay. is Chris, uh, Chris Wilson. Welcome to the Muscular Gentleman Podcast. I'm excited to have you on this episode. We have been chatting already for a little while, and I am deciding to start recording. So uh, welcome, Chris. You're, it's great to be here. It's very <laughs> helpful uh, to hit that red button, yes, you know, yes, when yes. you know, I've done it. We've yeah. all been there. <laughs> we yes, we uh, managed. We're starting the podcast now. So if you're listening, uh, hopefully um, all our volumes are on and, and everything's working. Um, Chris Wilson is, um, he's got his hands in, uh, all sorts of jobs within the company critical bench, which is actually a company I've, uh, used when I was younger. Um, and I still have seen their stuff quite a bit. So big company, um, Chris, welcome. Why don't you tell a little bit about what you do in the company again for yes, the listeners? Of this course. Time. Yeah, of course. <laughs> well, this is the first time they're hearing it. Yes. So yes. It's I all know. new to yes. them. No, it's, Hey, listen, I've been talking about this business and what I do for a long time now. So uh, it's always it's always fun for me because I, I'm blessed to have a job that I truly enjoy. Uh, we call it TGIM around here. Thank God it's Monday because as much as I love being a husband and a dad, I really love getting back here in the office and, and doing what I love and working for a company that I believe in. That's and awesome. So yeah, yeah, it's great. Critical Bench, um, has been around for a long time. We're a health and fitness publishing company. Okay. It started in 1999 by one of my best friends, Mike Westerdahl. And it was very much a bench press 
uh, obviously critical bench, bench press company. And, and, and that's, he started it just to really help guys uh, gain some weight on their, on their bench press, 50 pounds in 10 weeks. That was kind of his big thing back in the day. And it's evolved quite a bit. We'll, t- we'll go, we'll go into more detail about that uh, yeah. over the years, but about 10 years ago, Mike and I started talking very seriously a, a little over 10 years ago, actually about me working for critical bench, which was like, oof, you know, we, we went to high school together. We've been friends for a very long time, uh, very close. Our families, you know, I, I know his parents well, like his kids, like, you know, you're really in each other's lives. And then it's like, wow, am I going to, am I going to work for this guy? And is he going to hire a guy that he has known since we were 14 years old? It's like, this is, um, cause sometimes that doesn't territory. work. Right? Oftentimes it doesn't work and yeah. it's typically never encouraged by anybody. <laughs> most yeah most people are like don't go into business with your friend or family right Right. but then you hear of these husbands and wives that work together Mm -hmm. and they seem to love it and then or you see you know these people and so it can work it's just oftentimes it doesn't work so i'm not going to say it went perfectly in the beginning there there were some hiccups in, in those first few years as we figured each other out right but mike needed a content guy and he i've been in in the health and fitness industry ever since, I mean, all through college, I was just, I would, (laughs) I lived in the gym or I was working out of home. I mean, I just fitness and health and strength, everything has been my life. I was a a high school athlete, um, always loved it. And right out of college, I I worked uh, for a world gym uh, chain and was, you know, a trainer and certified and I've been around very good, very intelligent, um, people to, to learn from. And we can go there if you'd like, I can tell you some big names that I got to share the room with many times. And um, so anyway, Mike knew ah, this is a guy who can really help with content. He can write, he can speak, he can make videos. And so let's, let's do it. So after a lot of discussion, we did it. And like I said, it went well. And I was really just, our, my big thing was one YouTube video every single day. Okay. Uh, needed to be released on our very small channel at the time, 4,000 subscribers on the, on the Critical Bench channel, which now has over a million. Uh, and I am not taking all the credit for that at all. Uh, that, that was a, a, team, uh, a team win uh, right there. I, I just got the, the luxury of being in some of the content and managing the channel all, those, all these years. Uh, but yeah, 10 years has gone by and I oversee our help desk. I oversee the podcasts that we have, Strong by Design podcast, which is in its fifth season doing very well. Um, and, and all content projects. So when we have a new product, product or program that we're making, I'm part of the brainstorming. I'm part of the filming day. I'm part of the, the post-production process and getting it live and then supporting it with you know, new content, uh, like on YouTube, so to speak, uh, that would help support and get the word out on something that's new. So I'm VP of content now. So I've gone from just kind of being a content, you know, creator and, and strength coach and, you know, kind of writer, blogger, Facebook posting kind of guy to somebody that kind of oversees a team of people uh, in different departments, making sure everyone's doing what they're supposed to be doing. And, um, more, more, uh, for me to be responsible for, but I, I, it's a great responsibility because I get to help. Ultimately I'm helping people. I'm helping people live stronger, healthier, longer, fuller lives, uh, by them being, um, you know, taking part in our products and programming that's out there. That's awesome. That's really cool. So, um, Chris and I got, I got to be on, I'm in the queue, but I got to get uh, be on your podcast, which was super fun, and uh, we had some really fun discussion there. Um, so you you have the podcast. Ch- you, you mentioned you had three channels. You have the podcast channel, and then the uh, the, the main channel, which has a million followers. And this is uh, more for uh, what what population like would want to join this or look into critical bench. Yeah. So that's kind of your, oh, we decided it made sense because we have two channels before, let's say, let's cut, seg, you know, segment out the podcast channel, <laughs> which is solely just for the Strong by Design podcast. So as we release episodes, we also put them up on YouTube. But we had our main channel, which was all like 
old school powerlifting video content from back in the day and a bunch of like just exercise demonstration videos, as well as this other exercise demonstrate. It's almost like we had two channels that were very much the same. It's like, like one kind of sat dormant and we just used it when we needed it for creating uh, digital books and, and, and PDF content so we could have demo videos. Uh, and then the other, the other channel was the one I, I was really focused on putting a video live every day. And it was kind of, could be anything. It could be anything that was muscle, uh, strength, health related. It could be a workout an exercise, coaching someone through an exercise, a mobility thing, a stretching thing. Uh, it could be nutrition based. It could be a myth busting. It could, you know, it was kind of anything I wanted it to be as long as I did a video every day. And that's what created a lot of momentum with that channel. And I remember when we first hit, you know, 10,000 and 20,000 subscribers and then 50 and a hundred, and we get the, we get the plaque for the hundred, you know, and it's like, ah, and then you just boom, then you just keep doubling, you know, and it's 200 and it's 300 and it's 500. Then it's, you know, and you're just like, oh, I can't wait you know, like, <laughs> get it to a million, you know, it felt like it took forever. And then earlier this year we hit a million and, um, and then That's just like that, you know, it's, we're going to be at a million, a million, uh, 1.1, you know? And so you yeah. just kind of keep rolling as this secondary channel. We started to give a lot of love to it called the compound, which is more for your muscle kind of sticking to our roots, more muscle building and, and more true workout strength stuff. And, uh, we have, we have two great coaches on each channel. So one's more hardcore muscle building and one's more just over 40 general health for men and women. And we can kind of cover anything we want on the two channels. It's just like, but we wanted to have a, a different feel for each channel. And so our audience is probably going to be a little bit more mature and more interested in, in kind of health you know, topics and moving better and feeling better. Whereas the other one's more, you know, probably more of that 20 to 35 demographic, mm -hmm. uh, maybe even 20 to 40, where you're just more looking for muscle building and strength content. That's awesome. Awesome. So I, yeah, well, I, at the end here, I'll definitely make sure there's links for everybody to go sure. check you guys out, but so tell us a little bit about the history of critical bench. So how did that get started through Mike? Cause this is a cool story. It is a cool story. Um, Critical Bench came to be because of uh, an end of, it was, I think it was the last semester of college, I would say for Mike at Central Connecticut, where he went, I went to Eastern Connecticut, he was at Central, so we weren't that far from each other up in the, the Northeast. Uh, that's where we grew up together in Connecticut. And I remember him talking about this, this website that he had to create called criticalbench.com. And I was like, oh, interesting. This is, you know, late 90s. This is yeah. Back in the day, man. And, uh, you know, this is like, I don't even know if I had a cell phone yet, you know? <laughs> I know. Uh, say, building you know? a website was probably hard to do this, back then. To right. Now, right. He needed a working website where I think that he could actually, um, I, I don't know if it was a working website in terms of like he had to be able to produce like a sale or make it like a viable working website where someone could go on. There was something there that was, Somebody, it could, it was hooked up and someone could go in and find something and like per, make a purchase. Right. Wow. And I, I think what happened was he kind of created the website and had all this great information to help people, uh, you know, increase their bench press. And he started getting these orders coming in. Right. <laughs> it's like people were like, yeah, I want to increase, increase my bench press, but this is before digital anything. He right. wasn't like giving away like digital links for people to download stuff. This was handmade bench press programs. So I'm um, he would have he was like, man, I got to start taking care of these orders that are coming in. So he would make these personalized programs and then send them off. So he had like a binding like a machine, like he had stuff that he had you know to be able to put the paper in onto the spiral bound and make like nice holding your hand books for people. And that people could bring to the gym or use to track their weights and what, oh, I mean, this week I should be using this weight and all this stuff, right? This is like in his uh, like kitchen table kind of stuff. Yeah, this is him at home and dining room table, kitchen right. table, like doing this. This is, you know, 1999, 2000. And then uh, he did that for several years and even did it while well, he, he did a stint over in, uh, in Sweden playing football. 
Like, so he played semi-pro football over in Sweden. He ended up getting hurt. Okay. Uh, Mike was a really good college football player at Central um, and, uh, and took his talent over there with a friend of his. And they were, he ended up like coaching and playing football over there for a while. Okay. And his, his business was still here, like getting run by like family friends uh, <laughs> for this. Yeah, it was a really bizarre period, but it was, again, it was early days of the pro of the company. So it wasn't, it was just like, I don't know what he was bringing in for revenue, but it wasn't enough to like devote his life to it yet. Sure. Right. And then he comes back and around 2005 or so, I think Mike realized, you know, I don't want to work for other people anymore. If I just devote all my time and effort into this, yeah, I think, I, I think I could probably make something of it, you know? Yeah. Because it was continuing to thrive on some level. And he did. And sure enough, it pretty quickly became a six figure business, you know? Uh, and, and then, so he's like, man, I'm not, yeah, I'm definitely not working for anybody else. So <laughs> long story short, uh, cause I can go long, but uh, <laughs> Mike moves, Mike moves to Florida. I'm already down here in Florida and we've reconnected several times over the years because back in the day, Mike was sponsoring like powerlifting meets and stuff with his critical bench banner and, you know, he would give so much money to these meets so that he could hang his banner up and get attract more of an audience, right? People that would use his programs, power right, lifters right. and stuff. And he would call me up. He'd be like, hey, you want to come? I'll pay for you to come to Virginia. You know, we'll go. I'm sponsoring the meet. And I'd be like, yeah, I'll take a trip with my friend. This is pre-kids. We don't have kids yet. Right, right. Um, I'm, I'm just recently married. He just had met his what would be his future wife and. And so we're getting to go do fun stuff like that together as friends long before I work for him. It's just like little stuff that I could help him with. Right. Or he'd call me up. I was a general manager at a fitness and tennis center here in Florida for several years. And he would call me up. He'd be like, hey, I need, uh, I need some videos, to, to exercise videos. You want to come up on Saturday or something and I can take a bunch of pictures or whatever. We can. I'm like, sure, let's. And so I would help him like with some little programs, things that he needed or pictures or, or things. So it'd be like little, little things here and there. Cause I'm like, sure. I'll help my friend, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, he, he, he'd either, he'd pay for the program. Like he, I was getting money from him to do, do this stuff. That's awesome. And then, yeah. And then we start chatting seriously. Uh, when the company I worked for was being sold to a YMCA and uh, I got word of it in 2012, I want to say. So early 2013, we start getting really serious talking about me working for him. And it just made sense. It That's just awesome. made sense after some serious discussion and debate. It was like, if this doesn't go well, our friendship's more important than, yeah. than you know, uh, me working for you. So we got to, we got to realize it's not going to work, cut it off and like keep our friendship because this is at that point we'd already known each other for 20 years yeah we didn't want to mess that up that's really cool and and you you don't hear that story often i mean i mean my wife and i owned a gym together for a long time which was great and we made it work and we loved it um but it's not common you know you don't hear about it a lot um no it's very hard to make things work like that when there's a lot of history Mm -hmm. prior to this new chapter, because then you can get the emotions can get the best of you when it needs to just kind of be handled professionally. Right. And the, it's hard to handle like re a relationship <laughs> yeah. as a professional, you know, to yep. separate the two, so to speak. But I had been around it a few times in my life with working for uh, other people who I considered friends, but they were also maybe my superior or something. So I always seem to have a, a an ability maybe to kind of distinguish between like, this is a friend interaction or this is like, you're my boss interaction and respect them in their position. That's cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Not everybody can do that. No, it's very, it, it's not easy. I'll tell you. It's not. Uh, okay. So, so um, what do you, okay. So uh, we've talked about this in your podcast, but I'd love to bring it up here. Um, you know, the muscular gentleman, my, my program and my podcast is all about how we can level up as men. How do we become better men, more masculine, all these different things. Can we talk about the, the critical bench because you have a, a quite a bit of employees, right? You have a big team. What are your core values there? Because this mm. kind of lines up with some of the stuff that we talk about with the muscular gentleman. Yeah, without question. Yeah. There was a period of time several years ago where we didn't really have 
anything to be grounded in, in terms of values as a business. And I, I, I would, talking to all business leaders out there, business, business owners, CEOs, presidents, whatever, entrepreneurs that are startups, it doesn't matter where you're at. You should absolutely have some kind of core values or principles that guide you in your business and all your decision making that you can lean into when maybe things get difficult in a, a business relationship or an employee situation, uh, how to handle something, uh, how you create product, uh, a new product or program. So we use these seven core values that we had a mentor of ours, a dear friend of ours, uh, Dr. Ron Eccles, um, who is, again, he's, he's, he's a mentor. He's somebody we trust. He's somebody that's been around the block. He's a, a multiple business owner and just good sense and, and wisdom. And so we said, Ron, why don't you come in? This is back. It was just me and Mike. This is like six or seven years ago. That's awesome. And we said, we want to sit with you for the day and talk about creating these principles that guide us in the business, you know? And from that, actually, we got the, the phrase strong by design. So that day, strong by design was born long before the podcast started. Okay. And, and yeah, because we just like that slogan, you are strong by design. And it's not just a, a by chance, right? Right. It's something that's like, that's planned, that's, that's uh, practiced. Right. So, but in order to get there, you have to have guiding principles. Yeah. And so we came up with these seven and I keep kind of pointing this way. Cause I have them on well, all of the offices in our business, in our uh, office space here have uh, the core values on their wall, but I don't have to look at them to tell you what they are. So uh, <laughs> Uh, there, I'll let you know if, if he's glancing over there. <laughs> yeah, as I, as I, my eyes wander to the left here. So, one, I'll just run through them really quick, yeah. and we can we can always uh, stop on one in particular or two if that really catches you. Uh, one is positive attitude. Next is integrity. Next is gratitude. Next is service. Then you have passion, decisiveness and faith. And we thought that that seven best captured the essence of us as, as, as the business owner, creator, founder, uh, and me and, and a handful of other people uh, that were in office and virtual. And, and we just thought that, you know, this really, if you can satisfy all, all of these, if you can get a high score, in each one of these areas, then you are right to work here. And then again, if, if a business relationship or whatever it is that we're in the process of, of working on, is, is it satisfying, you know, every one of these criteria? And so everything is filtered through these core values, all of our decision-making, hiring and firing of people, uh, partnerships or, you know, people that we'll do business with, things like that. Like if they're unethical or we feel like there's an integrity issue, done. If people are late for things or untimely with things, that's decisiveness, done. You know, it's it's like all of these things. If you have a crummy attitude and it's you're just constantly like down in the, you know, it's just like, we just, it's like you got, and you got to, I, we love decisiveness. In fact, that's one of the ones we focus on all the time is because like people who are indecisive uh, are very hard to work with. Um, yeah, yeah. They, they, you you want to be fast and efficient and take massive action. That's what we have. We have shirts that say massive action taker because it's just about like, just do it. Yep. Get it done. GSD. That's other shirts that you see. Just yeah, yeah. GSD gets the clean version, get stuff done. <laughs> You're right, um, right. Yeah. Um, but these are things that we just love as, as people outside of our business, but within the business, it really makes things easier for us to have these guiding principles in place um, so that we, we, know, we know the answers to things without having to talk around them so much. It's just like, is it getting a check from, from this or is it not? You know, Where does it fall on the list? The, the decisiveness does uh, pop in because I talk about decisiveness. In fact, even on my last podcast, I had my wife on and she talked about because I, I, I discuss decisiveness as a masculine trait and um, and how obviously men and women both use this trait. But um, decisiveness and a man can really 
you know, level up his masculinity and even attraction with his woman. Yep. But it's also s- such a critical uh, attribute in the workplace. Mm-hmm. And so can you tell a little bit about how you guys uh, with your interview process and how you kind of decide on decisiveness? Because I've heard you talk about this before and it, I loved it. Yeah, no, I will. It's um, <laughs> it, 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 it sounds simple. So Mike, um, Mike does a lot of work outside of business specific stuff because it's, you know, when the leader stops learning and trying to work on themselves, that's when things will stall and not continue to progress. Mm. When you have a a leader that is investing a lot of time in their own growth and surrounding themselves with other leaders and other mentors and putting a lot and having accountability that's when you know, and then that that just drip, trickles right down to us, to the rest of everyone. So Mike, uh, some years ago, got uh, going with uh, somebody by the name of Randy Davis, who's been on our Strong by Design podcast before. Mike's been in this group now for a few years, and it's great. It's, it's business leaders and owners who are super serious about growth and doing it the right way, and um, and. Randy's, you know, Randy has this really unbelievable hiring process. And one of the many, we could say tests uh, along the way is before you make a decision on hiring someone is that you take them out to dinner, which is a very kind of normal thing, right? You're kind of entertaining somebody who who is this the right personality, the right fit for our company and organization. But what they don't realize is you're really doing that just to see, like, does this person make good decisions out at dinner? Are they going to drink too much on like an interview dinner, basically? Uh-huh. How are they treating the wait staff at the restaurant that we go to? Are they are they mean? Are they condescending? Are they nice? Are they, you know, and then how long does it take them to order? <laughs> are they indecisive about what food to get that night? And if they're indecisive, with a meal, how are they going to be with a project Right for, for being a super a key player on your team? And we talk all the time, which in fact came up today in our team meeting about being A++ team players. We don't want just A players. We want A++, which means you have to have better than 100%. A plus plus. So <laughs> we, yeah, because average is average and right. who wants, no one's striving for average in anything, right? Um, most people don't want to be just good at something. People yeah. want to be great. People want to be excellent. People want to be overachievers. People want right. to be Tom Brady yeah. at whatever yeah. they do, right? Right. And um, and so that's kind of how that's how how we roll around here. And and it really when you let other people not be a plus plus players in your organization and it ends up kind of pulling everyone down. Mm -hmm. Uh, And what Mike has learned from Randy is like, if you have one C player or B player in a, in a group of a plus plus players that brings everyone down, you have to have, you have to have so many a plus plus players to, to like overcome the fact that you have one B player or C player. And so you need everybody bought in uh, on, on, on this. So, Again, that's why we we hire very slowly, yeah, and we fire very quickly. Um, we everybody goes through ninety day probationary period. I mean, this is stuff that most healthy organizations are doing, so it's this sure. is nothing new. Right. But you want to be very slow to hire and very fast to fire. That's great. So, uh, have you guys had any like crazy stories within the uh, going out to dinner process? Has anything ever happened, or is it pretty? Well, I'll, I, so nothing, I wouldn't say this is crazy by any means, but there was one gentleman that Mike and I were really confident in, very confident uh, as a video guy for us. And just he and I took him out to dinner. It was just uh, the three of us, three guys. And we went out, we had a great dinner and we finished the dinner and we're like, that's our guy. That's our guy. He didn't last two months. Oh, wow. He, he was so good at selling himself. He had a great personality. He was a great talker, but he wasn't a great worker. Uh, he could do the work, but he wasn't a good worker. There's a difference. Yep. Yep. Um, wasn't a- and there was just so many little things. And we would have regular little meetings with him 
that first month or so that we brought him in. And he would, he would, again, he would, the way he would pitch us and sell us, <laughs> we'd come out, we'd cut out of a, out of a meeting where we were kind of like, kind of letting him know, like, things aren't going very well. You've got to like level up here. This isn't looking good. We'd come out of a meeting and be like, oh, he gets it. That's all he needed. It was, he just needed a quick correction. He is on board. He's a hundred percent. This, this guy's going to be great. And then sure enough, a week goes by. We're like, what the, what the heck is going on around here? Who is this guy? <laughs> Almost like so, you need to move him into the sales team. <laughs> that's, that's it. Some people are great at selling themselves or what they're capable of. Or it's, you know, again, it's, 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 it's all talk and no walk. Right. And right. so that, that's really what we got from him. He was a really likable guy. And I think that's what, some people are just likable. Yeah. You're in a room with someone and you're like, gosh, I just like having him around. And like, what a nice guy. Doesn't mean they're right for the job. Right. Right. Good first impression. Can they handle the uh, meat and potatoes? You know, can they, can they get Absolutely through? Absolutely right. Yeah. Yep. yeah. That's awesome. Well, okay. So I really like that tip, by the way, because, uh, you know, I owned a gym for 11 years and, and we had to hire a lot of people. And yeah. I mean, same thing. There's times where I'm like, man, this, this, this trainer is perfect. And then like two weeks in, I'm, I'm going, that is nothing like I entered, like nothing like this. What's happening? You know, who Um, is this person? (laughs) It's wild what people can show up with. And, uh, and two now, I mean, one of the reasons I closed my gym was, was just finding good employees has gotten harder. I mean, it is. And I'm sure you guys see that now it's, it's, um, it's difficult to find somebody who's willing to work really hard, um, not not get all of the accolades for it right or all the praise um it, it, i don't know it's just a different kind of landscape now yes i think so i think you're very very sp- right with that and i don't know if it's just the 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 i i don't i honestly it's hard to put your finger on it rustin over the last several years but yes i feel like it's gotten more challenging to find people that are really willing to dig in and and put in the hard work um without almost like an overwhelming amount of, of return uh-huh. early on. And it's like, no, you got to kind of, kind of got to get through it a little bit here. You know, we're not just going to day one, start celebrating you, you know, right. it's like, you gotta, like, let's, you gotta learn it and do it and put it in and grind a little bit. And some days are going to be hard and some months are going to be hard and, and, but we're all going to win eventually. Like if right. we, it's about buying into you know, to, again, to, it's buying into the process and the team meetings and the, 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 hu- the little huddles that we have on a daily, we have these little five minute huddle meetings that, so we all kind of know what, what we're, everyone's doing That's each great. day. And it's, it's communication and it's, it's, uh, and, and showing up, it's showing up people. It's like, can you show up for like years? Can you just keep showing up? And if you can keep showing up, and then people will never forget you. Right. It, you know, this, okay, this is a great segue into kind of masculinity and men and, and, you know, the importance of how men need to be showing up um, in, in their relationships with their kids, with other, other kids, you know, other youth watching them, um, you know, be a, a muscular gentleman or a man. Um, so, so can you tell us a little bit, how, cause I, I believe this wholeheartedly, sorry, my video camera is getting a little bit off on, on, it was good. I think it was your muscles. I think yeah, you moved uh, in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you moved in and the camera was like, Whoa, too, <laughs> Whoa, much, Russ, too much muscle. <laughs> it might've been my five head. It might've been, you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, but okay. So, uh, tell us how, you know, um, critical bench, I believe this wholeheartedly, but tell us how critical bench kind of helps men, uh, you know, level up, become more masculine. Um, as far as, as that goes, because this is where, and again, maybe this is some stuff where uh, the younger generation isn't seeing this as often, but like, like you said, you know, when I hire somebody, I, I don't want to feel bad about kind of putting them through a gauntlet, so to speak, a little bit of, look, this is going to be tough. Like you're going to have to work for it. Um, and, and I think just as men, that's something we have to have as a characteristic to be able to push through the hardest part and not look back, you know? Absolutely. Um, I would say like in terms of what we're putting out into the world as a, as a fitness and health publishing company, where would people see it or feel it the most? Uh, certainly on through the podcast, which uh-huh. is really kind of like a, a ministry, if you will, for, so it's not really a few dollars trickle in from the podcast, but it's not really a monetized thing. We do do it kind of as a give back uh, because of our success over the years as, as a, a health and fitness entity, 
but we wanted to be able to reach people on, on, in different ways as well, whether it was through like leadership stuff and mindset stuff and faith stuff um, and parenting and all of these other areas of our life where we need to be strong by design. Right. And so that's, you know, when the podcast started uh, in May of 2018, it was, I don't want to say it was an overnight thing, but in March of 2018, I had no idea we'd be starting our podcast. And then we went to a, a, a Funnel Hackers um, event, a Russell Brunson funnel, uh, click funnels thing up in Orlando and, and, and hooked up with a, a guy we had already met, Luis Diaz, who, who helps people with po- get podcasts going. Luis is a great guy. He's been on the show. He's, he's just a terrific guy. And, um, within a matter of, uh, of just a moment, what felt like one night of talking, I, Mike, Mike's like, uh, so I guess we're starting a podcast and, um, you're, it's, you're starting it. Like, I was just like, Oh, okay. Oh, perfect. Uh, and so, yeah, I was like, all right, let's, we talked about doing one. It just sure. was, a, you know, maybe it was like a next year thing, but it just kind of happened very quickly. And, but what's so great about the podcast is what we, the conversations that we could have, and put out into the world to help people in all these different areas of their life. Uh, Cause it doesn't just stop at fitness and health, right? There's so many other ways to be strong by design. And so um, I really feel like the, as you alluded to earlier, the showing up uh, of men, um, you know, I, I'm so fortunate and blessed uh, being uh, the youngest brother I had two older twin brothers. They were identical twins. And I basically had like a super brother is how I looked at it. My brothers, Bob and Dave, it was like, the, remember Voltron? All the different parts would come <laughs> yeah. together and form this one great. Well, that's what my brothers were for me. Like I had one amazing super brother and they were uh, unbelievable for me growing up. I've talked about them in past episodes and stuff. In fact, I had my brother, one of my brothers on uh, some years ago on the podcast talking about our, our, our life. And um, my other brother un- unfortunately passed away uh, from brain cancer uh, nine years ago. So um, I'm sorry to hear which, that, which was, yeah, which is a, a huge blow obviously to me and certainly to my older twin brother. He lost his twin. Um, and so I had the luxury of having like the best big brothers on the planet and that's, I'll argue with anybody that I had the best two big brothers uh, and, and, and a great mother. And, and I had a very difficult relationship with our, our father, who was a, a, a bit of a disciplinarian and alcoholic. Um, I, I, I got a lot, I got a lot of good work ethic stuff from my father. But um, the reason I tell you all this is because I can use my story and my childhood and even the difficulties I had, but then the strength I gleaned from my brothers and my mother and and other people that talking about things and communicate, being a good communicator from a young age, I think really helped me become a better human being. Mm -hmm. Um, I be, I was able to connect with people and let them know that, you know, I, you know, I, it's almost like I had an an empathy for other people who were dealing with the same stuff, you know? So I think I just became a really good communicator. Uh, I've always been very talkative, but I think my, my, my talking also encourages quite a bit of listening because I'm, I'm engaging with people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I think that's always worked in my favor. And so the podcast, of course, was just another great forum for me to connect with, other people with an audience on all these different areas of life. Cause I care about not just lifting weights and, 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 and eating good, healthy foods. I care about like, you know, being a good dad and, you know, coaching youth baseball and, and like uh, being good coworker and a good friend and, and all of these other parts of my life. And so we infuse all those thoughts and feelings and along with our core values into all of our programming, like even on YouTube, there's certain things that make us a little distinct. Like we don't curse. It's just a choice that we make. Do I curse as a, as a person, as a human being? Of course, (laughs) but I try not to. And what's cool is on the podcast, I don't. And people who normally curse on podcasts when they're on our podcast, 
end up not cursing very much <laughs> or at all. I will talk with a person for five minutes before I hit record. They will drop 10 F-bombs. They don't hear me dropping any F-bombs. I hit record. They don't stay one F-bomb for a whole hour. <laughs> They're like, so, okay. I, it's, it's, there's just something about it, right? So you, you right. become what you're exposed to and what you're around. And when I'm here in the office, it's just conducting, being respectful of other people and stuff and get along, getting along with our, our, our coworkers. And so these core values become who you are yeah. as, as a human being. It's not just showing up and, and living this out while I'm in the office. I walk this out in my life when I leave here. So it's how I handle myself at the grocery store when I when I go get food, making someone's day. Uh, oh gosh, where was I just the other day? And I was like, just trying to really make someone feel good about their job. I forget where I, oh, I, I was parking my car at, a, at the baseball stadium. I was went to like a single A uh, baseball game with my son and met a bunch of other baseball dads. And the attendant out there just getting baked in the sun, oh. you know, this, this l- little old cute lady taking your, your car, your credit card for the parking, for the parking lot there. And oh. I just talked with her for a minute. I said, you know, whatever her name was. And I said, you, you're darn good at what you do, you know? And it just made her feel, and she had a laugh and I laughed and it just made me feel good. It made her feel good. She's standing out here getting baked in the sun all by herself. And I'm like, gosh, if more people just did that in their life. Right. Right. How much better things would be treat the person better. When you go get your coffee, treat the person better. When you go pick up your food, make someone's day, tip someone with a tip that just will blow their mind and change their, their whole week. Right. Right. And if we can just do more of that, um, that in our little world, that's a ripple effect that will yeah. be felt and then hopefully spread by other people. I love that. I, I also love the name of that podcast, your podcast, Strong by Design. I love it because, and this is something I teach with muscular gentlemen, you know, about masculinity. We talk about all these traits, like decisiveness was one of them, um, and, uh, you know, assertiveness, responsibility, all these different characteristics. What's cool, and, and what I tell my men is like, you have these traits already in you. They're already there. It's just, are you willing to bring them out? And start leveling them up to to a higher degree. Can you can you use them, you know, as as much as possible, as often as possible? And so that name really does resonate with me. And I, I think a lot of people listening would too, just knowing, look, I have what it takes. It's just, am I willing to put in the work and and do all those things that yeah. I can, you know? I think a lot of people they have the desire, right? right? right. It's like, but can we tap into that enough? often enough where it becomes a, a habit, something yep. that we're, that we're doing on a daily, something that we'll, we'll go to bed earlier for, so we can get up earlier and, and, and get after it, you know, every single day when we wake up, but it ultimately it's just decisions and choices. Yeah. And when you have decisions and choices that are more, you know, helpful and, and, and good, uh, and you make less bad choices and decisions, you know, it, it just becomes a, it just becomes a, a volume thing at some point where like you just, you overwhelm the bad stuff with the good stuff and you like the results of the good stuff. So you just do more of the good stuff. You know, it's like, this keeps getting me closer to my goal. So I guess I'll just keep doing more of this. Well, it's kind of like what you alluded to with your core values. You know, it's, if you have those core values in place, your decision-making gets easier because it's yes. leading the way. And I'd say this too, with purpose, you know, men finding people, men and women need to find their purpose and not just like a checklist of, Oh, I want to make a million dollars. That's a checkbox, right? We don't need checkboxes. I want something deeper. Why are you here? And what's your purpose outside of something that, you know, it's just a, a to-do list. Absolutely. I think that can drive people to make better decisions and, and having core values, like you said earlier, is such a good, point for people to, to like, remember this after this podcast or, or whatever, just write some stuff down, start jotting notes and figuring out what that, what are your core values? You, you don't have to own a business to right. have core values, have five, you know, or something. But I think that's a really cool, cool way to level up. Oh, I think so too. Without question. They're good for anybody, whether, whether you're a business leader owner or not, it's yeah. just to have guiding principles in your life 
to help you distinguish maybe a good relationship from a bad relationship, you know, uh, a friendship or, 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 or an intimate relationship with somebody that you're exploring. It's like, to, if, oh, this, I really don't like smoking. This person's a smoker. Well, then maybe that's not the right person for you. Or maybe you should see if you could help them quit. You know, like right. if you, you become what you expose yourself to or what you surround yourself with, you really do. I mean, it's a hundred percent true. If you're going to be around people, who use foul language or mistreat people in their life, there's a good chance that you're going to find that acceptable at some point or that, Oh, that's okay to do that. Or that's, you know, so, and then all of a sudden you start doing it, you know? Well, you Uh, don't feel judged by those people by doing it too, because they're already doing it. Right. Like easier to pull people down. Right. Than then, but I loved what you said about these a plus plus people in your, in your uh, workspace, because, it's and I I've heard a different term or I, I've used a different term where it's like the thermostat, right? Like yes, you know I, I have a higher expectation for myself and how I conduct myself throughout the day. And there's times where my wife's like, "Man, are you being hard on yourself?" I'm like, "I think there's a difference between being hard on myself and having my thermostat all the way up and wanting to live life on that thermostat." Because more times than not, if somebody gets in my presence, I'm hoping their thermostat will go up with me, right? Um, but yeah, that, those B people might turn into an A because they're surrounded by these A plus plus people. No, you're, you're absolutely right about that. Um, it's it's one of those it's one of those difficult things, right? Uh, it depends on the position that we're typically hiring. Of course, our process is much. If you're going to be under this roof with us on a regular basis. We need A plus plus. We need to feel your A plus plus material during the interview process. If you're a virtual person that works for us, that's maybe some type of contract work or something, we still have a process, a screening, and you know, we 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 still go through applications and do all that stuff. But it's definitely like you could probably get away with some bees there, you know, and then hopefully as they're exposed to us and, and our the way we hold people accountable and the way we conduct ourselves that they will rise to the occasion and, and level up. But if you're under this roof, yeah, we're, we're, <laughs> we're, we're pretty dead set on maintaining an A plus uh, plus environment, so to speak. Oh, and I love that. Do you guys with your core values, do you put them in a certain order? Or is it just, they all kind of equally show up? They really equally show up. Uh, we actually have a silly acronym because some people, um, we, we will openly quiz people or, or <laughs> randomly, I should say, randomly quiz people. What are the seven core values? Go. And you have to get it in 30 seconds, you know? And some people just get like stage fright <laughs> where they're like, I know them, but I like, Ugh. and then like yeah. inevitably they get stuck on the P's because there's two P's. And mm-hmm. so they'll be like passion. Then they're like, uh, 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 uh persevere. No, not perseverance. Uh, Positive right? attitude. Positive attitude and passion are our two. You got it. There you, you go. see, you're already, you're already, you're already there. You're on the, on the cusp of being hired. Um, so, so no, we, we have a silly, um, acronym pigs, PDF, P I G S P D F is our silly acronym. That way you can never, I can never forget it. Like if right, I get right. stuck and I know I, okay, I already did the S cause now I'm into the PDF. <laughs> right, right. That's you know what I mean. Yeah. But, and then, but underneath each of our core values is a simple phrase for each one. And I told Mike at our next big planning meeting, when we have, we have to do these quarterly meetings or annual planning meetings. I said, the next one, I, or between now and the next one, I will uh, memorize the phrases under each core value as well. So that when you randomly quiz, I will also get the phrase that comes with the word. I already know three of them by heart, so oh, I'm go. good with three. So I just got to get these other four down. Then I'm, I'm comfortable with the entire core values poster on my wall. That's, that's, that's right. great. Well, <laughs> I, you know, I know I said positive attitude, but I, it's so amazing what that can do to somebody's uh, entire day. Yes. Um, it's so easy. You know, I'll get cut off on the way, you know, driving to, to film uh, in the gym or I'll, you know, something happens and it's like, I can let that, I can let it ruin my whole day if I wanted. I really could. Uh, my wife and I might get in an argument and that argument I could just let, you know, destroy the day or, or a couple hours or whatever it might be. And it's like, man, just your attitude, just adjusting it back to where it needs to go can just flip everything, you know? Yes. Um, 
it's it's but, it's uh, absolutely yeah. huge uh and that's it, it, it's funny because on their own, each individual core value, you could make a case for each one being the most important core right. value. You really could. Yep. Like if you don't have passion, if I'm not passionate about what I'm showing up to do every single day and every week and for the people I work with and helping people on the other side, you know, uh, then I'm not, where's the enthusiasm? Where's the, where's the heart? Where's the, Where's that, the blood, sweat, and t- you're not, you can't, you can't just fake it, right? You can't fake it. Right. So you got to have the passion. You got to really enjoy it at your core mm-hmm. to, to, I feel to do your best at it. Yep. Um, and, so, or gratitude, people who aren't grateful or showing gratitude for their position, for the, the, the environment that they get to work in, the, the work that they get to do, you know, the relationships that they have, you have to, you have to show great gratefulness and gratitude. In fact, they say a lot of times that gratitude might be one of the most powerful human emotions mm. because it's kind of a, a, a mixture of, of, of love and of, um, uh, of, of appreciation kind of all ravel, all, all mixed together. Right. And yeah. it's, it's that pouring out of, of like, man, I, this is, uh, it's, it's, it's humility too. I feel like is it is mixed in there too. Cause when you're showing someone else gratitude, you're really giving them something that's very powerful. Um, you, you make them feel, you make them feel something. You will, you will move that person uh, in, in some way. You know, when you show gratitude to someone that you don't even know for just doing something, something simple, like, mm-hmm. man, thank you so much for doing that. You know what I mean? Like it, p- people sometimes are blown away by it. They're like, Whoa, why is this guy being so nice? Why is he showing me gratitude for something that seems so routine, but you know, it's, it, it, it goes, um, it's so uncommon. Right. And right. I, and, I, and I think so many people aren't used to that anymore. Uh, and so it's not, you stand out when you, when you show that, uh, to other people. One of my, uh, one of my life coaches, um, that I was working with for a while, she, uh, she said, you know, it's impossible to be in fear and in gratitude at the same time. Yes. Correct. They like, don't, they don't coexist, right? One, it's one or the other. And I, I love that because, you know, we all, we all tend to live in fear on, on some level, something stressing us out. There's fear involved, right? Uh, an argument with our spouse or something like that. There's fear involved. There's, and it's like, if you can flip that switch into gratitude, it, there's so much that can start happening, whether it's an argument or stress, whatever. Um, but I also love what you just said there. And I, I never really pieced this one together, but it's almost like you can disarm someone who might be, uh, you know, you don't know them. And, and it's like, all of a sudden you show them some gratitude out of nowhere. And it's like, you're disarming them. They don't have to be afraid of you. And it's, it's such a cool way to look at it because there is a lot of ways you can use gratitude, not just for yourself, but just for all these other people and all these yes. ways. It's really cool. Yes. I think so. I think people are very, uh, every, a lot of people have their guards up anymore, you know, but if you, if you're gratitude, show uh, gratefulness, gratitude right. to someone, uh, that, that'll bring that down and they will be much more, um, uh, much more open, uh, uh-huh. much, 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 much more willing to show you part of them that maybe they wouldn't have just because you have shown them. I, I again, what goes with gratitude is, is a form of humility. I think that, that you, that you've removed some ego and some pride and you are, uh, humble enough to let someone else know that they're, they matter. They're important. They should, they should feel special or, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's very powerful. And then whatever fear they might have of who is this person? Yeah. Yes. Fear might be lingering. You just kind of took it. You disarmed it, you know, which yep. is really cool. That's all. That's awesome. Okay. So I have to ask this because I ask yep. all my, all my uh, guests, but what would your definition of the muscular gentleman be for our <sighs> audience? Good. Muscular gentleman. I've gotten a different answer every time. Yes. And I've been fantastic. I'm, sh- I'm sure <laughs> uh, my definition for that would be someone that cares enough about other people in their life to put in the time and effort required uh, for their own health and well-being um, to, to, to go above and beyond because they need to be able to show up for everyone else in their life. 
Mm-hmm. And when you're not taking care of your own fitness and health um, and putting in the work to be physically uh, active, you will not have the energy or the output necessary for all the other people counting on you in their life. If I don't invest time and effort, energy into everything that I do out in that compound or everything I do just in, in life from coaching and being an active participant in things, I am not going to be able to show up the way I need to for my wife, for my kids, for my boss, for my coworkers. I'm not going to have the energy for it. Uh, and muscular gentlemen. Yeah. It's just, if you do, if you put in all that hard work and grind, it's, it can feel for some people, or it can sound like a selfish type thing, right? Because mall muscular, you just all, it's all about aesthetics and stuff. Huh? Yeah. Well, aesthetics is a great side effect of right. putting in the work, but it's a side effect. I do it because I don't want to be a soft, lazy um, d- man. I, 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 I'm a go-getter. I'm somebody that is up and at him and walking around and moving. And I very few times, the only times over the weekend where I'm sitting idle is when I was playing Scrabble on the floor with my kids or go fish. <laughs> Otherwise I was up and out and moving around and doing stuff and getting stuff done. And that's just mm-hmm. at home on the weekend with my family. Um, I, 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 I believe 100% it starts with us as, as the dads or the man of the house that we carry a, a, a very big burden and that, and I'm, maybe I'm old school in my thinking, but I, th- I think my wife will even tell me like everything kind of hinges on, on me mm-hmm. and my, um, my presence, my words, my tone, how I interact with everyone. And if I do it right, everyone else benefits. My wife is happier. She's a better uh, wife. She's a better mom. When, when I make those good decisions to start my day uh, off correctly. And so it just trickles down to everybody else. So uh, they, it's like they say with the plane, right? You got to put the mask on yourself first before you can try and help anybody else. So I'm going to put all the, all the eggs in my basket and, and kick my own butt and and work on staying strong so that I can be strong for everyone else that's counting on me. That was so good, Chris. <laughs> I'm going to have to uh, transcribe that and then put it in my <laughs> manual. <laughs> no, that was so good. That was so good. And, and it's so true. Um, I, I, you know, and that's the point of the muscular gentleman. You know, I, I start in my program that all the men that join, I start with, with food and with fitness. Yes. I have to, you know, and, yeah. and then we work on mindset and we work on these things, but What's so amazing is how much when a guy starts dialing in, in his food and his, his fitness, um, his mindset shifts uh, just from that alone. And yep. then we dive deeper. But I have to start with those two things because I don't, if I don't have a foundation, right? If I have a guy coming to the program who's, um, you know, 80 pounds overweight, well, then that's what we're working out of. So the energy levels, right, that you talked about. Uh, is going to be very, very low. The The output of what he's able to do is very, very low. So we have to init- initially start with those processes um, or, or your masculinity is just only going to get so far, right? And I can't take you all the way. Um, and, and I love that. That was great. Um, so I should have just led with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can edit it down, baby, right? Just put it right in the beginning. <laughs> brought in so much uh, good uh content there just right there um i've got reels that i'm gonna make out of (laughs) there you go i said the same thing like three different ways so hopefully you know everyone understands it oh it's so good um so so with the muscular gentleman and let's talk a little bit more if if you've got time about masculinity because i think you know we've kind of brushed on it but um we talked about decisiveness and things like that you talked about your health being so critical um Mm. but you also brought up how you influence those people around you by being that masculine man. Um, Let's talk a little bit more about that because this is talking about, which is a masculine trait leadership um, and your ability to impact. I don't think men from a, I'm talking broadly here, but I don't think enough men know how much impact they have on the people around them. Oh my gosh. Yeah. It's absolutely huge. Um, I just think how, how much of a gift it is to, to be, uh, you know, a dad who can coach 
for his son's baseball league. And all of the things that I've learned over the years being on the baseball fields with the boys. And that's our, that's our next generation, right? These are our, you know, eight to 12 year old kids um, that I've been around now. Well, I mean, Jesus started coaching when my son was five, he's 10. Mm. And uh, I get to be on the field with these kids. And then, then it, it's also a community thing. It's these dads that I'm around. I mean, I showed up over the weekend. We had our baseball tryouts after some rain outs last week. We finally had our tryout on Saturday. All these dads that I've become buddies with, guys I do life with, right? Outside of work, these they're not connected to what I do here. I have a whole family of people here that I work with, you know? But then I get to take all this great stuff and bring it to the baseball field and be around these dads who, and then, you know, the dads that maybe are thinking about coaching who are just showing up and sitting in the bleachers, watching their son get coached. And then they're like, wow, I, look at this guy. I I'm energy. I'm like most days after a game or a practice, I don't have a very good voice. I am just <laughs> bringing it. I'm bringing it, man. Cause I want these kids to show up. I will probably I'll get like, 10 to 15,000 steps at the fields. I will sweat and drench out my shirt. I, but I leave it all out there because I want these boys to see someone who's working hard for them, who holds them to a standard and, and there's discipline and this is how you treat each other. And this is how you be a good teammate and you don't piss and moan when it doesn't go your way. You keep your head up. Right. Everyone's a winner out here, but you have to, you have to act that way and you have to carry yourself that way. But there's so much that I, when I think back to sports in my childhood, some great coaches that are still very special to me. And I've let them know this. Uh, it's a, a coach who just not that long ago, I think retired from my high school who had great success, unbelievable state championships and all kinds of stuff. And, um, and I'll never forget how he talked with us and how his brought his emotion and high fiving and hugs and all this great camaraderie and stuff. Um, but then also the tough conversations when things didn't go right and and when we didn't perform at our best and having those tough conversations. And that's that's just letting people know that you give a crap. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my son, he gets like, you know, the butterflies in the belly. You know, he's a he's a pitcher. And so when you're going to take the mound before a game that matters, you know, you kind of get that feeling, you know, it's like sure. right before you're going to run down the field and on special teams and the, the, on the kickoff, you know, that those feelings. Right. And he, he looked at me, he's like, wow, dad, I'm so nervous. I, and I'm like, buddy, I said, that's good. I said, use it. That's energy. That, that means you care. You know what that means? That means you care about what's going to happen when you get up on that mound and you're a leader on this team and everyone's looking at you and you just got to show up and be a leader for everybody and just keep playing with that fire. You know what I mean? And I, we t I talk to my kid and he's 10, but he gets it, you know, yeah. and he gets that his dad cares enough to like give it all I have to him and to everyone out there and treat each other. This, and I treat every, I don't treat him extra special. Right. I treat everybody the same out there, but I do in my mind, I have extra the extra standard for him. <laughs> right. right. I, I have more expectations for him out there as, as yeah. a leader and stuff. But, but I, I gotta tell you, sometimes, you know, I'll, I'll do all that and I'll have like the best day, but then sometimes I'll go home and I'll be just not a great husband because I'm, I'm tired. Uh -huh. And sometimes fatigue brings, brings on bad decisions and maybe a bad choice or something you, you, you should have done or shouldn't have said. And yep. so I am not by no means a perfect man. But um, I constantly read audiobooks or read audiobooks, read books, listen to audiobooks. <laughs> yeah. I do I do a lot of that reading audiobooks. Everybody listening knew exactly what you meant. <laughs> Everyone knew exactly what I meant. Um, yeah, I typically always I have two audiobooks running and like five different podcasts I listen to on a regular basis. And that's what makes my drive. If anyone's stressed out on their drive to and from work, start listening to more audiobooks and podcasts that really are life giving because it totally removes the stress and anxiety of, of traffic and getting where you need to be um, when you're just learning while you're driving. It's, it's a wonderful thing. And I can't tell you how many books and podcasts I've absorbed over the years doing that. Okay, okay, besides besides Strong by Design and the Muscular Gentleman, what's yes. what's one podcast you would recommend for, for the oh listeners? Gosh. Wow. Um, all right. Well, I'll name I'll name a couple. 
Okay. It's hard to just name. So um, one for sure, uh, Craig Groeschel is, is a leader. He is a Craig Groeschel uh, leadership podcast. He's an author. Uh, he's a pastor, speak, unbelievable speaker. Um, this man can command a stage and speak. He's just unbelievable. He's a husband and father and, and leader. Uh, he's up with the likes of like a John Maxwell and, and different. He's unbelievably gifted and, and he has a leadership podcast. So it's, if anyone wants to be a better nice. leader and learn to be a leader, Craig Groeschel, uh, look, look him up. Um, I, I actually listened to a podcast from uh, friends of, of ours here at Critical Bench who have their own podcast uh, called the Power Break Podcast. And they've been guests on our show three times, mm. two gentlemen, Bob Brubaker and John Trebino, and they're unbelievable men. Uh, so I listen to that regularly and I listen to uh, uh, Frank Turek, who has it's a, an apologetics podcast for any anybody out there who's interested in, in Christian stuff. Uh, he's unbelievable, but he's a he, it's just it's all value based stuff and it's wisdom and truth. Uh, so it's it's really, really good. Um, but I'm trying to think of another maybe one other one that's um, that's really good. Just more business. What oh, well, an, another one is uh, born to impact is really good, uh, which is Joel Marion's podcast that they have a lot of terrific business leaders and entrepreneurs there. So anyone looking for mindset stuff, that's really, really good born to impact. That's good. That's awesome. Uh, what about books? What about audio books? Like one mm. or two? Well, I'm actually just finally, uh, finishing up, um, uh, uh one with James Clear called Atomic Habits, which is absolutely oh. great. I, I guess I'm a little late to the game on that one, but sometimes oh. some of these great ones kind of get on get under the radar for you, and finally you make make the choice to uh, to get it. That's um, a good- oh, it's 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 terrific one. Um, one that uh, I listened to. Let me go to my library really quick. Not that long ago, that was really good. Was by Malcolm Gladwell called Outliers. Oh, yeah. uh, and that's, have you heard of that one before? Yes. yes. So, good. okay. Terrific book. And it's really for any of you out there who are fascinated by people who are just unbelievable in their category, like overachievers, the, the most excellent of excellent. This book goes into detail about why that is, how that happens, uh, how you become an outlier pretty much in any area of, uh, uh, of, of your life. And it's just fascinating. Uh, he talks about pilots and hockey players. Yeah, and, hockey players right? yeah. yeah. And the hockey player one, right. With the Four. age cutoffs. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's just crazy. Right. It's unbelievable how all this works. Right. But in like in information technology, like the people that were like, get all the credit for the, and the industrial revolution, all these people that were the most, 15 of the wealthiest people to ever live, 15 of them came from the 18, like 40s and 50s. Why is that? You know, so it's kind of, it's all this great, it, there's a facts that back up all of this stuff. It's not just random chance. I know. Uh, you almost want to know how he wrote the book because that just, the, yeah. it's fascinating how he was able to come up with all these. Oh, it, yeah. The, the, the amount of, I was blown away by, from start to finish that book. Everything yeah. he talked about was, fa- it was just, it's really an eye opener. Uh, terrific, terrific book. Uh, yeah. Highly recommend it. Uh, but I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm always in books. I got a stack of books over there and I'm, I just, I'll have like three or four going at a time, you know, which is maybe not always a good thing. But <laughs> what you're feeding yourself all this, this yeah. positive information and you're constantly ingesting stuff that's going to help you level up, which I think yeah. every man and, and even women listening needs to be doing. Um, I, I do want to go back. I loved what you said about being a coach. I think it's so critical as a man to understand that your impact is more than just one yourself or your immediate family, but the amount of impact you have on those other kids, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know, know this story, but you could have one or two kids in that group where their father is an absent father, right. Or doesn't really stand up with masculinity like he should, or mm-hmm. whatever that might be. And just your presence and like you running up and down and, and bringing all this energy can be such an impactful thing for these kids that you don't even know you're doing, you know, and you might okay. never know, but but believing that you are making that impact is part of this process. I think as men is, is you just got to believe that this is why you're here, you know, and this is what you're here to do. Yeah, I think so too. And I feel that a lot of times in, in the moment, 
I try to appreciate it mm-hmm. um, and and reflect on it and realize the blessing I I have to uh, these these kind of talents I, that I that I kind of seem innate like it's just in me right this this energy that I'll bring uh, whether it's to a practice to a game right to a to the field to inspiring kids, but even inspiring other dads to, to lead and, and to show up as, as, as fathers and husbands and stuff and all the time and effort put into being at the fields, all the, all season, these seasons are long, man. This is like (laughs) anywhere from four to six months. And you're there several days a week from this hour to this hour and, and helping any way you can. And when you're doing that in your community, you are giving back massively to, to, other people's families like you are helping your community by doing this it seems simple ah just go and be a baseball coach right right yeah that's 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 what you call it but you're also you're now you're a community leader at some point you are you are helping hundreds of people in your community you're helping these kids you're you're creating a safe place for children to go and to be and to feel welcomed and and cared for and 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 uh, seen and heard I'll pull kids aside. I mean, some of the greatest joy I get is from some of these kids that don't start off really great in the beginning of the year. And by the end of the year, I see this passion all of a sudden they're getting hits and running bases and giving me high fives and like, yeah, and giving me all this emotion and stuff that was like bottled up and you knew it was there. You just had to tap into it. And then you see the dad, the reaction of the dad with me all of a sudden i'm like the best buddy i'm like the best (laughs) friend they're like giving me hugs and high fives because they're so excited to see their kid excel or do something great that they knew they could do they just maybe they just don't know how to tap into it you know but our our team environment was able to do it i mean i have a picture right here on my desk this is from the past baseball season that's That's awesome proudly right on my desk that's 2012 spring of 2012 we called ourselves the pickles. We had green jerseys. <laughs> I'm, I'm standing there in the background with three other dads and 10 kids in this picture who are special to me and will always be special to me because I got to coach them. Yeah. And yeah. That's fantastic. That's great. Great success. So, you know, that that's what we're, that's what we're called to do. That's being a muscular gentleman. Yes. yes. Burning lots of calories on the baseball field <laughs> and letting the kids know that you give a crap about them. Well, and that enthusiasm, right? It's amazing what, you know, if you walked out and said all the same things, but without the enthusiasm and the energy, it would come off completely different. I don't think people, you know, sometimes we don't realize how much impact just our energy can bring, but you can have a kid get, I mean, go from, from zero to 60 with you, with you, or they can just sit there idle because you're not bringing anything other than just words. Um, exactly right. It's, it's massive, but you get them to believe in themselves. Right. And, and that's, and they're at that age, I'm, you know, 10 or whatever to, to be impacted even more because the older they get, right. They, they, they're not as, as easily swayed. Um, you know, they, those walls start coming up. So right. you got to you got to do it in these transformative years when they're still a little bit open yep. and more heavily influenced by, you know, that parental role, that mentorship, that coach environment, you know, and um, and really just just understand the opportunity that you have to really change the trajectory of someone's life, of their future, of the way they see coaches and and I, 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 I feel that I feel like if, if I don't, and if I don't hold myself to a certain standard, I will absolutely go over and I'll apologize. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm the very, I've talked about, I don't know if I've talked about it on your podcast or earlier on this podcast, but I'm not too good to say sorry when I've maybe overstepped my bounds or let my energy and my passion and enthusiasm get the best of me. Um, not to the point where I'm like running around the field, like <laughs> being vulgar and, and, sure, and, sure. and abusive, but you know, sometimes you just, you let your, your yeah. passion kind of get the most of you as, yeah. as a passionate person. Mm-hmm. And, um, and you got to recognize those moments. And if someone deserves an apology or something for maybe being too hard on them, too, too much tough love, then you got to pull them aside and let them know that. And, yeah. um, and, and, and I think that's important. That's great. Uh, Chris, how, okay. Two things. One, how can people find you? Um, where can we find you? And I'll put this in the description as well. 
Absolutely. So obviously earlier we talked a lot about YouTube. If you just type critical bench or critical bench compound into YouTube, you will find uh, our two big channels and a lot of content. We upload a video every single day. We do regular videos, shorts, live streams, you name it. We do it all and we have a great time doing it. Unbelievable coaches that come and film here and uh, just a wonderful team of videographers who put it all together. Um, you can find us on um, Instagram at the critical bench. So at the critical bench, you can find us on Instagram. You can find us on Facebook, of course, just critical bench. And uh, we have a big fan page, had it there for a long time. And, and then lastly, if you're more interested in the podcast, go to strong by design podcast.com. So we have a nice website there that we've uh, continued to update and improve and make it a nice experience for people to learn about uh, the types of guests and topics that we that we talk about on the podcast. But if you just any platform you listen to a podcast, just type in strong by design and you should find ours. You, you can kind of see behind me what it, it's the strong by design logo uh, with uh, the micro the little microphone with the stuff coming out. Nice. Perfect. And OK, you mentioned at the beginning of this episode that you uh, you know got to work with some pretty cool people in the past. Yeah. And so I'm, I, I still want to know. You want to know? So name, name drop for me because uh, this is my, you know, I love the, the training yeah. world. Sure. Well, if you're, if you're in the training, um, one of the top known names in the world of, of personal training and strength coach is Charles Poliquin. Who, oh, uh, huge. Charles, yeah, CP. He was, uh, so he used to come. Um, ben Prentice, who's the owner of uh, – Prentice Hockey and Performance up in Connecticut had a, a facility called Body Tuning okay. back in the late 90s, early 2000s. And I was one of his very first employees. And Charles used to come and uh, come to our facility all the time and would do one-on-ones with us and, and regular meetings. And we would uh, do workshops with him. And Ben became kind of like his right-hand man. Ben became uh, uh, somebody that learned a lot from Charles, they worked together quite a bit. And so Charles was always a welcome personality uh, at body tuning back in early 2000s. So I was kind of uh, in my middle 20s and, and training a lot and uh, learned a lot from him face to face and in person. And uh, he was quite the personality. Um, my certification through National Academy of Sports Medicine was back in uh, 98 or 99. And Jake Cutler, four-time Mr. Olympia, was in my workshop class to get her, his certification at the That's time. Wild. I had Big J sitting right behind me uh, before crazy. anyone really knew who he was, but he was already a beast. And yeah. so we, we, everyone was like, take your shirt off. Take your, we don't see you flex, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, he was as wide as the door, you know? Say, he was like a refrigerator, probably. Oh, he was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah I always felt, though, I was like, man, I'm so much bigger than him, but like taller, not like, you know, like, <laughs> like you know, I was like felt like several inches taller, but like he's he was just such so, such a just a wide, unbelievable muscular freak who went on to, you know, to win four titles as Mr. Olympia. So that was pretty cool. Um, yeah. A couple more people. Let's see. Oh, when I worked uh, over on the East Coast of Florida, uh, there was a, another high level bodybuilder, Darum Charles, D-A-R-R-E-M Charles, who in the early mid 2000s was a top 10 bodybuilder in, in the world winning all kinds of uh, competition and uh, Darum, I used to uh, see him every single day where we trained uh, clients together and he would ask me stuff. Uh, look, he, he would see me do stability ball exercises with people and be like, could you show me how to use that thing? I don't know what, <laughs> you know, so I'd, I'd be showing the pro bodybuilder how to do like uh, push up and tuck exercises using a stability ball, you know, <laughs> That's he thought, cool. thought that was really interesting. And then, um, one other guy, I mean, just your, your people might not know who he is, but he was a, uh, for me, the, probably the pound for pound strongest guy I'd ever like helped, uh, or, or, and worked for his name is Lloyd Weinstein. He was a power lifter, uh, in eighties and nineties and in the late nineties, he participated in a world's master, uh, championship event in South Africa. This guy's 155 pounds had one of the nicest squats I'd ever seen in my life or, or any other lift deadlift or, 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 and bench were, were immaculate too. But 
um, he could lift three times his body weight in squats and deadlifts. He was unbelievable. Wow. He was up in the upper high five hundreds uh, for a 155 pound man. I remember spotting him doing triples with like 450 or something like that. And his form was just perfect. He was perfection. That's and awesome. so when I would watch him, I'd be like, gosh, if I could just look kind of like that when I lift, <laughs> um, he, he was just a, something to behold. I just loved watching him exercise and, and gets, and he was, again, he was, he was so strong and so well put together, but it was just like a little spark plug, 155 pounds, yeah. but. You didn't want to, you don't even want to think of messing with that guy. Yeah, yeah, compact and just had it Un, unbelievable power and strength. So, and those are just some of the great names in in the in this world of of fitness and strength and oh, muscle yeah, building cool. that I've been exposed to over the years. Oh, I appreciate you sharing that. That's really cool. Yeah, awesome. Well, Chris Wilson, everybody, thank you so much for being on the show, man. This was fantastic. I will probably bug you to try to bring you back, but this was, this was a blast. Lots of cool stuff. Yes. And I appreciate your time, man. Oh, it was an absolute pleasure. Love talking about all this, Rustin. Thank you, man. Yeah, absolutely. You've been listening to the muscular gentleman. Finally, a podcast that's unapologetic for being a man. Thanks for joining us this week. Make sure you visit the website, www.themusculargentleman.com. You can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, or via RSS, so you'll never miss a show. While you're at it, if you like the show, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes. Or just tell a buddy about the show. That would help, too. Don't forget, Rustin is available for private coaching. Embrace your masculinity and live the life you've always wanted. See you next time on The Muscular Gentleman. <laughs>